Welcome to another segment of Wildlife Wednesday with the Shogwana's Public Library. My name is Linton Arnold and I'm the Botany Group Leader for the Trinidad and Tobago Field Naturalist Club. Today, I want to talk to you about the top 10 indigenous tree species here in Trinidad and Tobago. My top 10, that is. Now, the term indigenous simply means that these are tree species that occur naturally or are native to the islands of Trinidad and Tobago. At present, most persons do not know the names of the common trees in our beautiful islands. This video seeks to educate persons on the same. For the past 10 years, I recorded the most cited and numerous indigenous trees throughout the different environments of Trinidad and Tobago. It is expected that if you take a walk outside in any part of Trinidad and Tobago, you will quickly see at least one of these native tree species. Let's get right into it. Number one, the hog plum tree is the most common indigenous tree species identified, possibly due to the fact that the seeds are dispersed both by animals and water, or due to the fact that the tree can also be reproduced using its vegetative parts. Number two, cocorit. Apart from being the most abundant palm species in Trinidad, it is used in many forest regeneration projects throughout its distribution. The palm can grow in both wet and dry environments. The yellow pui or Handranta serratifolius has numerous medicinal usage. Most people do not know that the bark can be used as an antidote against certain snake poisons. Balsa or barflow is a large fast-growing evergreen tree species with a huge wide flat crown. It is an excellent pioneer species due to its effective mode of dispersal, wind dispersal. You may be familiar with the fluffy cotton-like material which ends up inside the home of many Trinbegonians. Number five, Bacano. This species is the only member of the Urtikesi family existing in Trinidad and Tobago and have numerous medicinal usages, most of which is still practiced in many indigenous villages up to this day. The royal palm is a tall arborescent palm, 40 meters in height, with a prominent green crown shaft. The palm is widespread throughout both islands, with the exception of the northern ridge and the mid ridge. Now, angeline fruits are edible. However, the seeds are toxic. The low branches of this tree species makes them efficient windbreakers. Insecticides and pesticides are obtained from the leaves, whereas the inner bark is used to treat certain snake bites. Red mangrove is the most common mangrove species on both islands which can easily be seen protecting the shoreline. The bark is used for treating hemorrhoids, diarrhea, and even bladder diseases. Now, interestingly, white olivia trees can grow in both wet and dry conditions, growing up to 40 meters tall with a diameter at breast height or DBH up to 100 centimeters. This species was over harvested back in the mid 19th centuries. Similarly to white olivier, local cedar has been exploited for its class one timber and is presently recorded as vulnerable A34 by the IUCN red list of threatened species. At this point, I am sure that some of you all are saying, but wait now, I didn't see this tree in the top 10 list. For example, say a silk cutting tree. This is because these tree species were exploited considerably in the past, so much that they are no longer common on the islands. 
Some of you all may be wondering why tree species such as bamboo, coconut, or mango have not made the top 10. This is simply because these are not indigenous to Trinidad and Tobago. They are what we ecologists refer to as naturalized or established species, which means that they would have survived, reproduced, and substantially increased in numbers in the wild over many years. Maybe next time I can provide more details on my top 10 naturalized tree species in Trinidad and Tobago.